understanding and meeting and accounting cash flow analysis. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our email address and phone number. And the source for this lecture is from the Keystone Wygant text, the longtime text, the intermediate accounting. The publisher is Wiley.com, where you can get some good interactive information, including some PowerPoints. We've talked about cash flow, and we want to throw in uh, some non-cash activities that are still important to the company. And here are three of them, three major ones. If you issue stock, and instead of getting cash, you issue stock in exchange for getting assets, buildings, equipment, whatever it might be. That's a non-cash transaction. Another one is conversion, converting bonds or debt into stock or equity. So you've got a company that you've borrowed money from, and they want to participate in the growth of your business. They want to be an owner. They want to earn dividends. They want to share in the earnings. And they decide to convert from a debt instrument and be a creditor into a stock or equity instrument and be a shareholder. So that conversion does not affect cash, but it also is an important change in your business. And finally, an exchange of long-lived assets. So maybe you exchange a building for a piece of equipment with someone. You're exchanging one asset for another. Well, that doesn't affect cash, but it's an important change in your business. There are a couple of calculations, in fact, three of them that we're going to look at that have a lot to do with how you're doing as far as the cash standpoint. And we use the word at the top, liquidity. And the first ratio here is current cash debt coverage ratio, which is a mouthful to say. But what we're saying is, let's look at net cash from operating activities, which if you remember from the cash flow statement, operating activities is the one at the top of the page. We're going to divide that cash amount by average current liabilities. And what we're getting is the answer to the question. Can you pay current liabilities from current, and this should say, operating cash flow? Can you pay your current liabilities with your operating, I'm going to abbreviate operating cash flow? I'm going to save that change. And now I want to flip over to Excel, and I want to talk about how this might look on paper. So here's an example. Levi Jeans Company has cash flow from operations, from selling jeans, purchasing equipment, prepaying some insurance of $32,000. They have a list of current liabilities. And current liabilities are those that you have to pay in a year or less. So you think about it. Accounts payable is general bills that you owe. You've got to pay people payroll on the next payroll cycle that you owe them. You've got some income tax payments that you need to send in. And then the current portion of long-term debt. When you look at your long-term debt, you're thinking, how much do I have to pay over the next month, three months, less than a year, and it adds up to $50,000. So I want to give everybody a feel for what current liabilities mean. Let's take an average. Let's look at current liabilities at the beginning of the year. Let's look at it at the end of the year and take an average. So those are current liabilities are upcoming payments that you need to make in the next year. And we're going to take the cash flow from day-to-day -day operations, and we're going to divide it by this average current liability, and we come up with a debt coverage ratio of 0.58. And I say right below it that 1.1 is considered good. You want to have enough cash flow being generated from your day-to-day -day operations to cover what's coming up in the checkbook over the next year. That's what we mean by that ratio. The next one's slightly different, cash debt coverage ratio. And this looks at net cash from operating activities compared with total liabilities, not just your current liabilities, but the long-term debt. The question you're answering from this ratio is, 
can you pay all your upcoming liabilities based on operating and a reading operating cash flow? Flipping back to Excel, here's our cash flow from operations. I made it a bigger number this time. And let's look at not only our current liabilities that we saw on the prior screen, but let's look at some long-term debt, too. So let's say you have a note payable of $60,000 that's due several years out. You have a corporate bond, a debt instrument that you issued that creditors bought for $80,000. And let's take an ad, let's say that that total liabilities number is the sum of current plus long term, $190,000. Let's save that change. Let's say at the end of the year, that number was 126,000. We're going to take an average of our total liabilities of 158,000. And we look at our cash flow from operating activities and the average total liabilities we have outstanding, and we say it's a 2.2 to 1 ratio. That's good. What that says to the business owner is, I'm generating enough cash so that not only I can pay not only current liabilities, but long-term liabilities, too. The last ratio I want to talk about is called free cash flow. A little bit different. Again, we start like we did with the two others, the net cash from operations. But we're going to subtract off some other upcoming payments. The first is capital expenditures. <clears throat> You're going to buy vehicles, equipment, buildings, whatever it might be. Think of any sort of long-lived asset, something that you're going to use over a period of years. We consider that a capital expenditure. We're going to subtract dividends, payments that you make to shareholders out of profits. And whatever's left we call free cash flow, and generally we use it for one of three purposes. The three biggies are, maybe you invest in something, maybe you pay off debt, and maybe you retire treasury stock, which is a little more complicated. It's not seen a lot in accounting. It doesn't happen as a lot compared with other financial transactions. So here's our cash flow from operation, $347,000. We'll assume that we bought a vehicle and a building for $250,000. We pay a dividend $5 a share for 1,000 shares of Class A common stock. That's $5,000, and our free cash flow is $92,000. And we're going to use that cash flow for several things. We're going to purchase some corporate bonds, $50,000, somebody else's debt. It's an investment on our books. We're going to retire a note payable of $30,000. And then we're going to purchase treasury stock, the Class A shares, for $10,000. And you'll note here that treasury stock is defined as repurchasing common stock held by the public. So when we buy back that stock from the public, we actually reduce the amount of equity in our balance sheet. So that's what we did with free cash. That's the end of part seven on intermediate accounting. Here's our YouTube channel, Ken Boyd, STL, all one word. Uh, we are now on Facebook. You can copy and paste this link to my Facebook profile where, where we will do some work to help people with accounting and finance. For one-on-one -on -one live tutoring and chat sessions over the internet, you can come to my uh, homepage. You've got my email and my phone number here. Thanks very much for watching. And we'll see you next time.